I don't know how well you guys can hear that on the camera, but I swear every time I sit down to film, there's either people yelling in my street or seagulls flapping and squawking outside. So I'm afraid you're just gonna have to put up with it, guys, because it's way too warm for me to be closing my window. Anyway, ex tatasoma, tiaratum. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that may interest you, please consider subscribing to our channel. Today's video is going to be all about the Ex Tatasoma Tiaratum, or more commonly known as the Maclay Spectre, or giant prickly stick insect. Those seagulls are going to drive me mad. Sorry guys. <laughs> Anyway, so this is going to be a care sheet video. We're going to be setting up an enclosure for them and I'm also going to go through some tips and tricks on how to raise them. So, first off, let's start with setting up this enclosure. So guys, this is the enclosure here that we are going to be using for our stick insects. Now, this is going to be a bowl where I'm setting up some substrate. I'm going to do a mixture of sand and cocoa fiber substrate. This is not necessary for them, but it's what I like to use. I'm using a netted cage because they like airy conditions. They also like drier conditions as well, although nymphs will like a little bit more humidity. So while I set this up, let's have a little bit of a chat about what we plan on doing for our substrate bottom. So, as I said, we're gonna be using our cocoa fiber and sand substrate mixed together. I'm also going to be putting a pot in of moist substrate. Now the reason for that is I want springtails to still be present in my enclosure, but the springtails are not going to do well in a dry environment. So what I'm thinking is trying something new, putting a pot in there separately. That pot stays moist, it won't be enough to affect the enclosure as such, but the springtails may then jump out of the pot, help clean up any debris and poo and things like that dropped by the stick insects and then still have access to jump back in to that pot where it's nice and wet for them. That's the plan anyway. So, as you can see, we've got in our cocoa fiber. Now we're gonna add some sand. Now I'm just gonna mix this up. It's like being a kid again, playing with like dough and things like that. Anyway guys, so, they do not require a substrate bottom to lay over. They simply flick that over and you can actually hear, hear it hit the sides as well. So they literally flick over or drop it onto the floor. Um, it will be better in a substrate for hatching, but however, you can just leave it on a kitchen towel bottom, for example, and they should still hatch okay. Now I'm gonna be adding this straight in there now. We do actually have a male sat in here already. He actually grew up from back in our nursery video. I'm not sure if you guys have seen that one. We did a little phasmid nursery in this enclosure, but it was turned on its side. So anyway, we'll get to him in a moment. He's the last remaining member of that nursery and he's all grown up now. The rest have moved on. And I don't mean dead guys, I mean literally moved on. So let's just pour that in, shall we? Now I actually really like the effect that that gives that sort of sandy, muddy substrate. So here's our pot that we were using to scoop sand in. I'm going to be putting in some damp substrate with plenty of springtails into this pot now from our old scorpion enclosure. And I've actually popped an old bit of banana in there, something for the springtails to swarm over for now until this environment actually starts making its own parts for them to clean up. So we're gonna Let's pick a corner actually. What about a back corner? So as you can see, I filled it right to the rim there so they can be able to get off and jump back in. Now, some of this substrate is already still a little moist, but it will dry in time. Now I can hear cars. This is gonna be a very noisy video, sorry guys. Um, but that is the only part that's going to remain damp for the springtails. So, next we need to pop in our pot with some bramble. So here it is. Now guys, bramble is a great food plant for them. However, young nymphs will take better to eucalyptus. Don't panic if you cannot get hold of eucalyptus, as most will still jump to bramble, but they just take easier 
to the eucalyptus. So if you are struggling, see if you can get hold of a plant and they should do absolutely fine. Now there are other food plants that these guys will take as well, such as hazelnut, salal and guava as well. So it's hazelnut, salal, guava, bramble and eucalyptus are the known plants for these guys to eat. So let's have a quick look at our male before we put in our females. So as you can see, he is fully winged. Coming right down here, this little edge is his wings and this edge here is his abdomen. Now they stay slender, about 10 to 10.5 centimeters in length. They have quite long antennae as well. And these guys don't properly fly, they kind of flap with style and glide. So if one were to jump off you and glide, it will literally come down at an angle like that and land on the floor. They're not just gonna be fluttering around the whole room. And if they do, it'll be over short distances. So that is our male. And here is a female. See how she curls up her tail to sort of imitate a scorpion. Now these are not dangerous at all, guys. They have a tendency to kick sometimes with their hind legs. They have tiny little spines on there, but they do not hurt at all, guys. So here is a female for you to look at. Now you can see that she is broader. She has little wing buds, but she cannot fly. And they do give off an odor when they feel too threatened. But to humans, it's just supposed to smell like toffee, although I've never really witnessed it myself. But apparently that deters other predators. So these will always be slightly more spiny as well. So we're going to pop this girl in now. Just gently pushing her with my thumb to try and tease her to get onto the plant. You can see how she resembles dead leaves. They camouflage so, so well. Now we have another female that we need to pop in. So I'll just go and fetch her now. Here she is, guys. Now you can see her swaying there. Now a lot of phasmids do this sway. That's not me moving, that's her. And that is to imitate the wind. So when they're on the leaves and the leaves are rustling in the wind, they're rustling with the leaves too. Now she took some damage actually to her wing buds in her molt, but it won't affect her at all. She's perfectly happy, perfectly healthy. Now these are a great beginner species as well, guys. If you're looking at getting into something a little bit different than Indian stick insects, the Extatosoma tiaratum are definitely, definitely worth having. So shall we pop her on as well? These are also kind of clumsy phasmids. So I need to give her that little bit of a push to actually start moving because all she'll do is grip onto my hand. As you can see there, as I move, she's still stuck to me. And I'll let go. And she's pulling the leaf down with her with her weight. So here you can see two females. They have slight different coloration. One is kind of slightly darker on the right and the other one is lighter on the left. And then if you compare them to the male, completely and utterly different. This guys, when it focuses, this is Extatosoma tiaratum over. Now it just resembles a seed, doesn't it? Now in the wild, these are collected by ants, taken into the ants' burrow. And what will happen is they will hatch and they mimic that ant species to get out of the burrow and climb to their safety, which has always, always fascinated me. Now the resemblance of the ant is black with a sort of orange head. So shall we take a little look at a freshly hatched nymph? So in this tub, guys, is a freshly hatched nymph. And if I open this up, you'll be able to see oh they're very very quick mind when they're this young but if you can see there that black like body with the little orange head just as i explained when they hatch from the over now in their next shed they will start turning brown and then they'll get their normal coloration from then on now this is the only hatchling i have left to be able to show you guys this was actually a delayed hatch um, from one of its brothers which is the male that you saw in the enclosure so let's pop this little guy in. There we have it, just on that leaf there. So there we have the size difference there from an adult female to a newborn freshly hatched nymph. So you can see how much bigger they actually grow. Now, as I already told you, the male size gets to around about 
10, 10 and a half centimeters. Whereas the females are more like around 13, 14 centimeters when fully mature and their tails are not completely oh, curled. As I said in our Eurycanthal Calcarata video, I do normally put more bramble in than that, but I had a set amount of bramble to do these various videos. I'm actually doing five phasmid videos at the moment, guys. We'll all be coming up on different dates, so I can't tell you exactly what comes up. When. Now, I like to give the over of these a good dry spell, a good few weeks of dry spell, even months worth of dry spells will be absolutely fine for the over of these guys, and then give it a light misting. And then just rinse and repeat, guys. Um, I'm guessing the reason that that tends to work is it shows the dry period, because these are from Australia, which obviously is quite a dry country. And then the misting will represent the rainfall, which encourages them to come out in a slightly damper season, so they have plenty to drink and eat, and where the plants will be growing. So guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Just a very basic care sheet for the Extatosoma tiaratum or McClay Spectre or Giant Prickly Stick Insect. Now I know a lot of you guys out there are probably looking forward to slightly more exciting videos or videos where I get scared of a tarantula or things like that, feeding videos, you know. But guys, it's really important that I put these care sheets, serious videos out there for you as well because there are lots and lots of people that are getting into phasmid keeping and I want to be able to assist them in giving proper care to their phasmids. So please, please stick around. If you're here just for the humor, guys, there will be funnier videos in the future, but I have to have to get some of the serious stuff out there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If this has been helped you and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video. So thanks again for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.